witness what they did to Wigan. But now from Post Office Road, where a Western... Oh. We've all been looking forward to two of the most entertaining and attractive sides in Rugby League. Paul Moriarty is the first man to pick up the ball. Mike O'Neill. So back to Alan Tate. Good long kick from Tate as well, and he's going to find touch with that, aided by the wind. Now Alan Tate, the former Scottish Rugby Union international, makes a good start to the game for Witness, and a good attacking position set up, if Witness can get the ball from the scrum, but it'll be Hulse put in with Greg Mackey. And it will come out for Hull, as it does so often these days. To the side that puts the ball in, they often take it out as well. And a promising plunge from Andy Dannett. I think David last season, any side coming here to Norton Park uh, knew they were probably in for a, a very hard afternoon indeed but this season three sides have won here it's perhaps not such a daunting task as it used to be well their disciplinary record hasn't been uh, good by any stretch of imagination they've had one or two serious injuries to players Colotto back this afternoon uh, but they are now looking to be a settled side they're still in the cup of course and it'll be interesting to see how Hull play this afternoon because they have been disappointed knocked out last week by St Helens and they might have a little bit to do here this afternoon John Devereux Another of the uh, ex-Rugby Union internationals on view this afternoon and has been in good try-scoring form in recent weeks. Here's another Welshman, Moriarty. The word is he's settling these days. And that's a good reverse ball back inside for Tony Myler. Good to see Tony Myler back in the thick of things. He's had such ill luck with injuries. Yes, he has, and uh, he is a very talented player. I, myself, think he's the best standoff half I've seen over the last seven or eight years. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how he fits in and gets this back line moving this afternoon. Kevin Allett from South Waters, this afternoon's official. Talking of Welshmen, as we were a moment ago with uh, Moriarty and Devera. Here's the third of the trio, Jonathan Davis, putting that ball safely away. Playing in the centre today. We've seen him on scrum down at full back on the wing, standoff half. Today it's in the centre. And, uh, he's having quite a good season, as you can see 12 tries and 70 goals. Mackenzie. Moriarty has been a glut for work in these the first couple of minutes. He seems to have had the ball more than anybody. Now Coloto. Just as we were saying, it's good to see Myler back. It's great to see Coloto back in action as well. He really had a very bad neck injury. Now Mike O'Neill. Promising stuff from Witness, and they're so alert, of course, close to the opposition line. Again, the whistle has sounded. So, uh, twice, Hull committing indiscretions. This time, it's much closer to their own line. So, Jonathan Davis will come across here, and he'll kick it goal. He's managed it, he's negotiated it safely. So it's goal number 71 for Jonathan Davis. Witness two, hold nil. Jackson tried to duck under Coloto's tackle. Dannett, now Mackey. Witness are up quickly for the long ball. Oh, Jonathan Davis went for the interception and tackles his man as well. Six more tackles because Davis touched the ball. Marcus Charles. take the pass back but Charles is there to pounce on it another stoppage the other side's really settled into any sort of rhythm yet no they haven't I would have thought that uh, Hull have got two big props in, uh, in both uh, 
Carl Harris and Nan Andy done it, and it's Cleal really is the manipulator of these, and of course John Shaw. They have a very good pack, and it'll be interesting to see whether or not they use it to the full. Oh, beautifully taken by Davis, and he's sprinting down the middle. The shield all the way by Eastwood. Still Davis out for the player. The player cuts inside, keeps going, and Martin and player is in. Try number one of the afternoon. He's gone to who other than the great Britain wingman. It was a lovely slip short pass to Jonathan Davis initially, which got him going at fully 40 yards, and a fire was not to be stopped in the end. That's why he's so good, this passing movement from their own half. And Jonathan Davis really steps up the pace here. Now it's difficult for the defence, they can't really get to him. Eastwood tries in vain, but really it was a despairing tackle. And when you have a finisher of the capabilities of Martin fire, the only result you can get is a try. So the tries just keep on coming for this man. And his record against Hull is sensational. He scored 11 against them in seven matches. Just another statistic. And he's heard us. And he salutes the crowd, they salute him. And Witness have gone into a six-point lead. This isn't an easy kick for Davis right out on the touchline, but he'll be delighted with his own contribution in that try. But witness have their six points. It's a great start, and it was a super try, that. Well, we always look for this type of thing from witness because this is what they're always capable of. What a superb defence splitting run. Going so fast, perfect timing of the pass. A fire steps in the cover, racing to cut him off at the corner. They can't do it, and a fire goes over. Myler again, he was involved in that move with Tony Myler right at the beginning of it. And he, he is a perfect exponent of the right timing of a pass. That's right, when you split the defence close in like that, near the play ball, it's very difficult for the cover because they are coming up to take the men on the outside. And when the defence is split down the middle, as Jonathan Davis did then, everybody has to about turn. And with the sparse cover that they had at the back, only the full back, it's very difficult to stop that when you have speed merchants, the like of Martin of Fire. But Hull have a chance now for their first points because... One of their men was held down in the tackle, and you can't do that, and so Paul Eastwood will have a crack at goal. Paul Eastwood, the left-footed left kicker. And those are Hull's first points. Paul Eastwood, with his 65th goal of the season, makes it 6-2. always enjoy playing Hull as the last meeting showed of course they defeated them in the Premiership final last season they also won up on Humberside this year okay, have plenty of time which to judge that one but you see he's picked back already inside his own 25 so it's a good ploy from Witness David, there's a, a much more familiar look about witness today. The only ones they're really lacking are sort of Kurt Sorensen, Andy Currier, and Paul Hugh. Oh, that's great move, and Jackson, the ball back inside for Mackey, who has to hold things up and wait, and that's uh, the impetus of the move was lost there because he had to wait for some support. So they couldn't keep it going. Now there's the high kick from Charles, which uh, Blacker can't get to. Oh, and if they'd have got that one away, the fire would have been streaking down this touchline by now. Penalty to witness, but really Hull had a chance there because again Lee Jackson was the man who made the break. Well, that's right, and uh, close in as well, it's very difficult for the defence to come over. The unfortunate part about it, when Jackson went through and, and fed uh, um, Greg Mackey, it really wasn't in to have enough support and it really died when they really should have taken advantage of that situation. Just watch her, I mean, really, there's no one really with him at all in an advantageous position, and they really snuffed it out right at that moment. Grimmer for witness. 
us back in the thick of things. Almost left the club earlier in the season. Now Coloto. David Hume. Lovely bit of interplay and Richie S streaks away. Now Alan Tate goes for the corner. They're not going to stop him. Tate gets witness his second try. David Hume instrumental to begin with. And then Richie S blundering his way through. Alan Tate coming up alongside. Try number 11 for him. Try number two for witness on the day. Well, that really broke. I mean, this is a marvellous move because the ball comes out very quickly, but it's done really with precise timing. That's the important part. It's broken the defence. He has time to look around him. Tate, as ever, on his outside, sprints over. What a try, that is. Davis has so far kicked one out of two. And judging from the crowd's reaction, it's one out of three now. Wasn't an easy kick, but witness 10 2 to the good. Desperate defence, straight into attack. Quick passing of the ball. This is a superb move, obviously practised well. Timing of the pass in Portman. The man coming into the line, as Richie Ayres did, it, is very important. Look at the defence, all caught this side. Tate has an easy task of finishing it off. Tate's kick is dropping down for Eastwood. Oh, and he couldn't hold it. The fire picks it up, switches it inside. It's got to be another try for Darren Wright. Oh, because Eastwood made the mistake. And there was no stopping him. It's only Darren Wright's second try of the season. His other one was against Canterbury Banks now. So his first in the championship since last March. Good time to get it. Because it's taken witness even further away from Hull. Two tries in a couple of minutes. Well, this is a dilemma everybody is faced with. I mean, he was facing into the sun. The ball came out of the sun. A superbly flighted kick. It came down. Eastwood couldn't hold it. A fire picked it up into Darren Wright, and he finished it off. Everything's going for witness so far in terms of try scoring. And this might go through as well in terms of goal kicking. Two more points for Davis. And witness are already so far in front, it's difficult to imagine Hull coming back at them. Well, look at the kick, look at it. I mean, he's falling back, he just doesn't know where he is or what's happening here. Martin of Fire following up quickly, as they can do with the speed that this man possesses. Draws the fullback, Richard Gay. The whole army of witness players could have taken that. Darren Wright was the first there, and he really went over unopposed. Well, there's plenty of enterprise in this whole side, and again it was Jackson coming on to Harrison's pass. But once the ball is lost, they're always in trouble when they're battling. As soon as witness move and put their foot on the accelerator, you feel that they're in trouble. And he could do all the planning in the world, as I'm sure Brian Smith has done, because he's that sort of a chap and he's very meticulous, but with the sort of speed you're up against, it's difficult to cope with. It is very difficult, especially when players are hitting the ball. Here they go again, it was Moriarty's past the Myler who gets it away, and Tate juggles, holds on, he's got a fire, one way or the other, Darren right now, the fire can't hold on, and relief for Hull, as Sharp picks it up. Again, it was Myler who made the breakthrough, and it looked to me as though a fire was going to get his name on the score sheet once again there. So Hull will be relieved. But they are an impressive side. I mean, uh, this is a, a breakthrough by Moriarty making the first back. But the acceleration of this guy, look how he swapped arms to put the ball in the other hand, take it away from the player, still be able to deliver the pass to Alan Tate. And really, it was only a bad pass by Dan Red, a little too hard to a fire and the man on him at the same time. Witness really are rampant at times of Moriarty. Thumbness forward and gives it away for David Hill. David Hill goes for the corner, switches it back inside. 
the chance goes begging. I thought Hume might have gone all the way himself there. He just didn't have the steam to get to the line. Otherwise, it would have been another one. Well, a superbly timed pass here. Just watch this. He breaks through, the big forward does. But look how he holds it off. Now, David Hume takes this pass here. I felt it was better. He really should have either gone all the way and forced the situation himself. He really didn't have much chance of getting that pass in and gave away a promising position. Yes, I think he, might, he was only about five yards out when he tried to throw that ball back. Now McNamara kicks. Well, it's a choice here. Tate or a fire can have it. Martin of I think I'll have that one. Perhaps he wishes he hadn't done. Better tackling from Hull. Forced right back, a good five yards. Blacker and Jackson. Witness had scored from that one, the game would have been finished, I think. It really would, and uh, one has to look at this whole side because they've kicked out on the full. That was a bad mistake. One or two play the balls would be bad where the halfback has been tackled in possession before he can get it away. And uh, thirdly, is that uh, they really haven't backed up people who have been forcing gaps into this witness defence. Yes, perhaps typical of their recent form, uh, a bad defeat by St Helens last week, coming soon after they've beaten Wigan. Hull is still trying to make a substitution as McNamara puts that ball away and uh, Blacker trying to fool everybody. It's, it's McNamara who's going to come off, actually. Carl Harrison now, he does get it away for Blacker. Blacker's into a gap here. And a long ball out into the corner for Turner and Neil Turner. Over in that corner has got Hull's first try. A pat on the back for him. Now the former Doncaster wingman, who got a couple of tries on his debut against Leon scrum down, has got Hull's first try. This will do them the power of good, because it shows that they're not invincible, the defence can be broken, and uh, they move the ball about quite well. It's a broken defence that Maggie again is involved in. The ball goes out, and Turner takes this pass with three men in front of him, but gets over for an important try. So Neil Turner adds to that tally that he's achieved for Doncaster and for Hull. And again, it was the long pass out that prized open witness. So here comes Paul Eastwood. Well, he's kicked a lot of goals this season. Not this one, though. Still, the scoreboard keeps ticking over, and Hull have got six points. The witness is 16 now. It's important they get back into the game at this stage, and uh, Blacker uh, seeks off to, to try and force a gap in the side. He does draw the defence in well. It's that long pass out that really did it, because the defence were caught really uh, not in position. That was an awful scrum. Almost wheel right round it. Uh, here come witness again with Myler, but he can't get this pass out. At least uh, Hull have withheld witness in the last few minutes. But now another break on the airs. The pass here again is good, and a player goes eastward. Might just nail him. He whips it back home. Witness looked as though they simply had to score from that. But Eastwood's tackle on a fire just halted the proceedings. Some really lively rugby from Witness. They do try and keep the ball alive at all times. I thought Ayres might have scored. They might still get a try here. It was on really from the moment that witness about 30 seconds ago started their drive towards the whole line.
desperate defence from the first movement. The second movement is a relative a quick play of the ball. But they move the ball about well, and when you have the defence on the rack, you have to make the most of it. And Mackenzie really goes over with the full-back gay, unable to do anything about it. The look of concentration on the Welshman's face. Davis, it's swirling in against the outside of the upright so disappointment for Davis but there's no disappointment for witness here that score tells you that witness are back in business when witness get their tails up they play a brand of football that's difficult to stop but that was a bad tackle it allowed Ayers to get through then but Tate follows up and a fire goes now it's admirable defense look at this defense because he is one of the fastest men in the game but Eastwood gets it you have to question whether Gay should have gone into that situation because look the man takes the ball on the outside Richard Ayers where he should have been standing Ayers is then pulled down by a desperate defense two three tackles but again the defense is all there in threes and as soon as they move the ball from the play the ball it really is just a matter of out flanking them one by one and a relatively easy try for Mackenzie to finish off I imagine if Oldham are watching this uh, they'll be a little bit disconcerted bearing in mind next week's cup tie the top shot is coming on the witness player is absolutely flat out it's Mackenzie he's picked himself up he still looks a little bit groggy quite look as though he knows where he is any easier and, and uh, just goes to show the pressure and uh, they played the ball very quickly Mackenzie then that he had no alternative but to stop him but not illegally and Hull will be really relieved to hear that Hooter it's been a torrid first half for them as Noel Clear manages to get it back though oh and they've dropped it oh and a kick forward here they'll be in trouble if Witness can chase this one Gay should just get there first oh loses it Witness pick it up no try, the referee says the ball was not forward. Hull have been their own worst enemies again. They certainly have. Uh, you just look at in this movement alone, there's one or two where players are held back, they are balked off the ball as well. They do just about everything. Then they get into all kinds of trouble because the ball is lost. But fortunately the ball was knocked on the first time, a result of which the referee has decided no try. And there is the hooter. What a frantic first half. So at the start of this second half, let's have a look at the statistics. Scrums, 5-3, Holsway. Not one against the headers yet. The penalties conceded, seven by the visitors, five by the home side. And the errors in play, 20 in all, so that's one every two minutes. But David, at least Brian Smith was very honest there in that uh, he did recognise some brilliant play by Witness. And uh, I think he was honest enough as well to say that his own players have made some bad mistakes. Yes, they have, but uh, he seemed cool enough, and I'm sure if he had that sort of attitude at half-time, he pointed out the things that they need to do in the second half. And as you say, it can sometimes work in your favour when you play and work that much harder when you're one man down. Again, they whip it through the hands. But this tackle by Marcus Charles is good. And Alan Tate. Mackenzie. Coloto. The news, by the way, on the Tim Wilby sending off was that it was an elbow off the ball. The referee hadn't seen it, so it was the touch judge's recommendation. The officials working in harness there. Mackie now starts to move off. Cleal. Oh, Mackie, that was clever. Good play by Mackie. Back inside, to Moriarty beats Cleal to it. David Hume, Coloto now. Trouble again for Hull here as Jonathan Davis goes. 
Well, he got about 10 or 15 yards there. The tackle on him was good. He turned his run into the line very well. And now Ayers has had a significant contribution in this game. David Hume looks for a gap. Nolan has him by the ankle. Only five minutes of the half. Garner's witness come pressing again. It is that speed that they've got which uh, seems to be catching Hull out. Ayers into the gap. And away goes Mylan. Oh, and he flings it down to Martin. If that was a forward pass. So the high skipping is to no avail. He throws the ball high almost into the crowd. Exasperation for Martin of Fire, but the referee was right. Well, he got the ball away marvellously well, but uh, I think there was little doubt about it going forward. Richard Ayers here sets it all up. He is dumb as if to pass, and that's one of the difficulties. When you have fast men on the outside and you dummy everybody half weights because you don't quite know what's going to happen. But uh, look, Myler's pass. He must have taken five steps forward before he actually cut it out of the air. A lot to go left with Harrison. A rampaging runner, Carl Harrison, who's had a, an outstanding first season at the Boulevard. Mackey back inside is Cleal, and now Cleal sets off, and now Cleal might just get all the way himself. Oh, he threw it to a ball, people of fire. Well, I thought Noel Cleal there might have even been a try score if he'd kept going, because he's a huge man who takes some stopping in full flight. Well, they really are looking to him for a big game this afternoon, that's a certainty, and it uh, really needs his cool head, and I'm rather surprised that he threw out that pass then. It would have been better had he really seen whether or not he could have gone over himself. Oh, the ball back inside has got Hull really struggling, and they're roaring up now. Fires on the outside, Hume is on the inside. Oh, and the ball is put down by Darren Wright. And a fire will be bitterly disappointed by that because he was storming up on the left, looking for the pass, and it never came. Well, when you have a witness side on this sort of form, you just don't know what to do because uh, from being on attack yourself and early scoring at one end, you suddenly find yourself in your own 25. Quite incredible. Just look at the way they move it all the time. Support always appearing, both on left or right. Now, Anil, it really didn't... It needed someone really to come on his shoulder. They were a little too far away. Gay did well there. He didn't really go in for Anil, stayed out for him. As a result, it allowed the defence to recluster and put the ground the ball. Charles. All down by Davis. Dunnock takes hold to within a couple of yards of the 25. Lee Jackson has had a fine game in the loose, decides to kick on and he might kick a bit further. And Lee Jackson is going to get a try here for Hull, is he? Melvin Hull has scored! And it's the big man, Noel Cleal, who followed through. We were just talking about his influence. And although Jackson couldn't get there, Cleal popped up from nowhere to score. One of the biggest men on the field, but he moves around, he's mobile all right. And Richard Cleal has his fourth try of the season, and a critical one too at this time. Well, it is a commendable form and so far this half, and this lad, more than anybody else, Lee Jackson, has done most of it. He's put that kick through sensibly now himself. He didn't try to pick it up, he put it forward, because he knew support was coming in the form of Cleal, and that's a great try. Paul Eastwood should kick this one. Jackson, he, he turns out he's so good at this at acting half, but he puts the kick through, O'Neill couldn't do much about it, he dribbles it past the player, but look at this, is good, because he chipped it ahead, he knew he couldn't get that himself, but Cleal was following up as he should do, and scored an important try. Charles. Ball was knocked on, and that at least will give Hull the opportunity to bring John Sharp back onto the field. Originally, they were going to take off Marquis Charles, but it's the number 11 that is being lifted now, so that suggests that Noel Cleal is going to have a rest, but he generally does this in matches. 
he usually no. goes off and comes back for the last few minutes. Yes, he does, and uh, sometimes I think it's the right time, uh, wrong time, because I think now they've got the impetus, they are going forward all the time, and there's no doubt at all about Lawrence Cleave's uh, ability to turn games, and his effort as well is much appreciated by all. It's rather a strange decision, this. Um, John Sharp coming on, all-round worker, but he doesn't have the class or the direction that Noel Cleave has. Witness do have it this time, and he thought about a kick, instead gave the ball for Davis, but good firm tackle from Gay. Myler once more, they're looking to his footballing skills now, Witness to get them through this. It's been a difficult period for them the last 10 or 15 minutes. Strange when you think that they've got those four tries in the first half, could have easily had a six or seven. But you always have the feeling that they are capable of doing it and you can't afford to relax at all. And that's one of the unfortunate things. You can work hard at your defence and your attack. You can put them under all signs of pressure and they can always break away and give somebody like a fire, Jonathan Davis, give them a chance and opportunity. That's what they've got to be very careful of. 100% they've got to think about the game all the time. Harrison held Pike down there. So can witness get another try? Moriarty came up there. Almost has to knock his own man Grimmer out of the way. The Pike has just come on and wants the ball. He wants to run it. Stretches the legs. Now we'll probably see the other substitute forward, Smith, coming into it shortly. Oh, once more, David Hume couldn't hold on, so Sharp makes tracks towards the witness line. Mistakes in the second half of witness. Yes, I think it's time for them now to cut out their sort of fancy football, just steady it all up, get everybody used to feeling the ball again, taking it through, using up your six play of the balls, and settling down. They're trying to do everything at 100 miles an hour. And they were so much on top at one stage in the first half, you would have believed it possible. That ball is put down. mistake just what you were talking about try number 38 for Martin of fire and that surely has eased witness into a winning position what an extraordinary man he is well just look at the picks up a loose ball hal on the attack the tackler went down to the ground and left the ball at his side. A fire picked it up. A vain effort, but there's no doubt in when this guy gets clear, there's very little you can do about it. And what a try, it's broken the hearts of Hull. So, Jonathan Davis, successful conversion. We've just about seen it, I would think. There's a big shout goes up. And witness go into a 26 points to 12 lead they're really pulling their game together Hull. they are play, moving the ball at wide but blacker makes a fatal mistake in trying to get rid of the ball on the inside he puts it on the floor martin of fire gratefully picks it up the defense are hopelessly outclassed and martin of fire scores the most important try still have good chances plenty of chances to score Richie Ayres they've managed to halt him <laughs> and a fire has to go back to his left wing position in the hope of getting the ball for his hat trick will it come now Mackenzie and the fire's got back over there the huge pass is turned and a fire goes for the corner it's another Martin of fire hat trick but it's the yeah, happy lad Stopping him at all. Hat tricks just keep on coming. Fifth of the season, 16th in his career, and the man is in the record books for all time. Their 12 man defence have been under pressure for most of the second half, but they've coped with it admirably. But witness know it, and as a result, they now move it out wide. A superbly flighted pass from Tony Myler sees 
Ophaya well on the outside. He checks to come inside. The defence are caught in no man's land. What a try. He's a living legend in rugby league. 30 points for witness, three tries for a fire. Almost predictable. What a fine game of rugby league this has been. Witness, worthy winners, and really showing us true championship style here. With six tries to host two, three of